again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And when I say everyone, I mean every one of you. It is Yay. so, yes, that's right. It is always good to see some of the same faces back week after week, but I tell you what, it is always encouraging to see new faces coming in the door and faces that we haven't seen for months on end come back into the door. Um, so today is a very encouraging morning uh, here at North Citrus Christian Church. Uh, we're coming to you here in Citrus Springs, Florida. For those of you that are online that may be watching this at home, we welcome you today. Uh, for those of you in the parking lot that may be listening to us on uh, 87.9, we welcome you as well. And we're here for one purpose today, and that is to worship the Lord. Uh, we are here uh, finishing up our series of Faith, Hope, and Love. And just a simple uh, pre-taste to the message, these three remain, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. love. So we're going to be singing about love and we're going to be hearing a God's word from Preacher George about love uh, today. So let's start off uh, by singing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Let's all be standing as we sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sinners perfectly. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can. Okay, now here's the tricky part, okay? We want to be respectful of those that need some space. But if you want to do a handshake or a little fist bump or a chicken wing, um, feel free to do so because I know there's some faces around here you haven't seen for a while. I'm seeing folks walk in from out yeah. of town and different places. So get a chance to look around, say hello. And if, if you're okay with bumping fists or whatever, Hi, feel, please feel free to do that. Take some time just to go say hello to one another. Go ahead and take a seat if you've had a chance to get some hellos in. <laughs> I have always felt that being a part of the church is so much more than just what happens between 1030 and when you get out at the end of the service. You know, it's that time of meeting and greeting beforehand, that time of meeting and greeting after time. So, so take some time to do that, even after the service today. I encourage you to look out for somebody maybe you haven't seen for a while and say hello to them. Let them know that they are, uh, you're glad that they are here. And uh, I believe, without a doubt, that God has brought you here this morning. 
And I know that he has brought you here to hear a message uh, from his word. We want to welcome those of you who are with us. If uh, you've not been with us for a while, or this is your first time or second time visiting with us, we encourage you to take a little welcome card that's there in the pocket in front of you. If you would please uh, do us the honor of just simply filling that out with your contact information, name, address, phone number. This also serves as an opportunity uh, for anybody that wants to give any prayer requests or suggestions or comments. There's an opportunity to do that as well. On either side of the auditorium, we've got uh, offering boxes that are on either side and in the back. Uh, we do not pass the offering plate here, uh, but we definitely have need for continuing to keep things rolling here at the church and moving forward as a church. So we appreciate our regular attenders and, and members uh, giving your offering, and you can do that in the offering boxes. Also, we will let you know that is available online as well. If you want to check on the, the website and the donate, uh, there's a little uh, QR code as well on the back of the bulletin that will lead you uh, to giving online as well. So we want to just say thank you for all your gifts that you have given uh, over time, and thank you for your continued gifts that you give uh, to the church and to be a great help in that area. Lots of things happening here as we kind of ease back into to things moving forward. Uh, we do have uh, both Tuesday and Wednesday night studies that take place here at the church. Tuesday at 6 o'clock, we're going through the Core 52 book, and that follows right along with the uh, chapter. Uh, this week is the chapter on love uh, that's there on the back of the bulletin as well. And then the book of uh, Revelation, uh, George is uh, doing the small group on Wednesday at 6. Those both meet back in our little Citrus Cafe area. If you've not had a chance to kind of uh, walk your way through the church, we encourage you to do that. If you're new to the building, kind of get familiar with the area, uh, with the restrooms in the back, little cafe area, and then we've got a whole fellowship hall building uh, next door as well. And uh, hopefully soon we'll be sharing some more um, events and activities that we'll be hoping to do again back in the fellowship hall. We were able to uh, have a good number over there last Sunday after church with a prayer and planning session. I want to thank those of you that were able to make it that uh, and lots of good uh, taking place out of that. So uh, we appreciate you being a part of that uh, as we move forward. Let's go ahead and uh, have a prayer. Uh, to go ahead and get started uh, today. Father, I'm reminded that as we seek safety and support and uh, trust, Lord, we can only find that in you. You're the only one that we can be completely safe in your arms, and we can be secure under your wings, and we can trust in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, you know there's so many things happening in our lives right now. You know every situation in and out. And Lord, you're here to, to let us know that, that you care, that you love us, and that you're going to help us through it. And Lord, we want to be a support to one another. And Lord, we want to be a support to our community and to the world in which we live. Lord, thank you uh, for bringing folks uh, today uh, that are here to hear your word. And Lord, help us to be faithful in proclaiming that word and help us to be faithful in, in uh, worshiping you and giving you uh, the glory that you so richly deserve. Lord, be with those that are unable to be with us today, maybe recovering from procedures or not feeling well this morning or are still concerned about uh, things happening in our world. Lord, just help them, let them know that we love them as well as they're listening, uh, perhaps even at this hour. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you just watch over them and you just provide your open doors and let them know that they are welcome back here with open arms. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to go into a bit of a worship uh, medley here with a couple songs in a row leading up to communion. Um, simply ask that as we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord, that we just think about what God is doing. Um, you know, it's not always gloom and doom, okay? We need to look at the opportunities that are before us. Uh, yes, there's challenges in our world. Yes, there's challenges in our, in our personal lives, challenges at work, wherever you go, whoever you relate with. But please know that God is opening the eyes of our heart. He wants to use us, and he wants to be there for us through every situation of life. So let's Let's sing together. Uh, we are glad, uh, let me do an introduction, to have Frank on stage. I don't know if you recognize the new face up here. 
Frank and his wife have been visiting with us for about a month or so here at North Citrus, and uh, he has shared that he had some musical talents, and I said, well, show up for practice. We'd love to have you. He showed up for practice. Not just once, but twice, but now three times. So, hey, we're, we're good. So he's going to be a part of uh, what we're doing here this morning, along with Midge and Crystal as well. And, of course, the help in the back. Let's not forget about Brent and Rachel, always doing a great job in the back as well. So let's go ahead um, as we sing together, Open the Highs of My Heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. just uh, inclined just to say another quick thanks to you lord i just pray that today you just open the eyes of our heart or whatever it is that is just churning inside of us whatever it is that's just been built up over time lord i just pray that you just reveal that through your spirit today and or just break through those those bonds that satan has placed and lord just let the blood of jesus christ come through and lord just open those eyes to see a, a bright new future with jesus uh, leading the way a step by step we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you lead me and I will follow you out of my days and I will follow you all of my days and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days. As we enter into a time of communion, this is a highlight of the service when we remember what Jesus Christ did upon the cross of Christ, dying for our sins, um, being buried and resurrected on the third day. As uh, we serve communion today, we're going to do that in a very uh, uh, safe fashion. We'll have the gentleman come around with gloves and a mask and uh, there's room in the row in front of you. They'll come with a tray. We use the double cup method to where the juice is in the top and the bread is right below it. So all you need to do is just reach out and take the cup. There's no need to touch the tray. Uh, just simply reach out and take the double cup and then you'll have that. You can take that at your own um, convenience when you're ready to do so. Uh, we do practice open communion uh, here. So uh, that's for anyone who uh, has Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and you want to be a part of that community together, you are certainly welcome uh, to join with us as we uh, share communion. We'll be singing uh, a beautiful hymn uh, simply entitled, uh, Oh How He Loves uh, You and Me. Oh how he loves you and me I know we all have grown up in different times and different generations, but when I was a kid, that was a long time ago, I used to memorize scripture from the King James Version of the Bible. And I still look back and I still remember, and I, I was coming through and working on this communion meditation, and it came back to me, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. And I was thinking what beautiful uh, illustration that is when we think about love and understanding. Now perhaps a more modern version is behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we are called the children of God. And the question is, well, what kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You know, all, all my life I grew up loving things and loving people and you know, I, I loved ice cream. I, I love ice cream. You know, ice cream's good. I like, I like I love popcorn. Um, you know, I, I, love, I, love, I love my dog, you know, I, I love, love my, my parents, I love, I love my brother, well, not really, well, sometimes I love my brother, but my sister, yeah, you know, I, yeah, but I love my wife, I love my wife, I love my kids, I love my kids, I, I love my church family, I, I love, I, I love my job, well, most days, you know, 
I, I, I love, I love to, to, to do this. I love my hobbies. I love my, my interests. I love to go out to eat. I love to eat. I love to eat. I love to eat. Um, all types of love that, that's out there. But what kind of love is this that, that God has bestowed, that God has given unto us, that allows us to become children of God? What manner of love is this? And I was greatly encouraged uh, as I read through the Core 52 book in the chapter on love that there's all t different types of love. I'm not going to take the time to go into all those. You're familiar with some of the brotherly, sisterly love and then the romantic love and all that kind of good stuff. But, but yet the kind of love that's talked about in Scripture is the kind of love that was really kind of instituted when God came to this earth through the person of Jesus Christ. In fact, this new term came across that was very familiar, unfamiliar to many. Um, it came across as agape, agape love. This was a love that was not understood until the time of Jesus Christ. This idea of unconditional love. This idea of a sacrificial love that's not about me, but is ultimately about everyone else. It's the kind of love that took Jesus to the cross. I'm always reminded of the fact that Jesus did not have to die. He was sinless. The wages of sin is death. His sin didn't send him to the cross because he didn't sin. Our sin sent him to the cross. And because God chose to demonstrate agape love by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth and then allowing him to undergo a, a sacrificial death on our behalf, oh, behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. And how much more important it is that we pass that love on to others as well. Because I'm sure that Jesus didn't feel by going to the cross. In fact, I know there was many times in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, is there not another way? <laughs> not, 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 not. Yeah, but then he said, not my will, but your will be done. And, and even crying out on the cross, you know, uh, why has thou forsaken me? You know, and, and just, it, he, couldn't, he didn't feel like it, but he did it out of love. You may not feel like loving others, passing this love on, or even kind of getting your own love with God straight. But it's not about feelings. It's about following through with action. Because he has given us such great love that we need to pass that forward as well. So as we take communion today, I want you to think about the love that he has given us, this agape love that's unconditional, and then how we can go ahead and pass that love on to others. Father, thank you. For loving us, quite honestly, when we were uh, unlovely, we weren't real likable as sinners, but we were sinners in need of a Savior, and thank God that your love created out of your heart an unconditional love, a sacrificial love that saw our need, went to the cross. And Lord, and somebody once asked Jesus, how much do you love me? And Jesus answered by stretching out his arms and dying for us. Lord, help us to pass that love on to others as well. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
We finish off our series today on faith, hope, and love. We've been using the sermon prep chorus, The Bond of Love, to prepare our hearts and our minds for message together. And so we'll be using this uh, again today. Bond of Love. Jonathan Beard is the same age as our son. And I, and I have to tell you, I felt pretty young coming in here this morning, but when he started talking about way back when he was a kid, <laughs> just hang in there, brother. You'll get it directly. <laughs> What you guys don't know, and I'm not sure Jonathan knows, is how much I thank the Lord for him being in my life in this ministry. And I do mean that. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. 1998, a lot of you remember that song. Uh, it, uh, it's a pretty catchy thing. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last till the end of time. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing there's just too little of. Now, <clears throat> maybe someone should let Hal David, who wrote these lyrics, and Burt Bacharach, who composed the music, understand that love is available in abundance from above, from God. It comes from God our Father, and it comes through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. On the other hand, it would be impossible for me to go talk to Hal David since he died in 2012. Bert Bacharach is still around. This spring he celebrated his 92nd birthday, but I'm not sure he understands the biblical definition of love that Jonathan just spoke of as that self-sacrificing and to use the Greek term agape love. It seems that most people do not understand the biblical definition of love. And with that, let's pray. Well, Father, it's so good to look out this morning and see some faces that we have not seen before. It's good to look out this morning from this pulpit, Lord, and see faces that have been missing have returned to us, loved ones, family members, here again. And Lord God, my simple prayer is that this message of love resonate in the hearts and minds of every person here. And that when we leave this place, we are better equipped to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. So what is love, sweet love? There seems to be a lot of confusion over exactly what it is. Children are confused about love. 
Uh, one little guy said, love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving lotion and they go out and smell each other. <laughs> there might be some of that going on. I'm not sure it gets any better during our teen years, teen years. For instance, one young man at the breakfast table said, Dad, I'm going to get married. His father was uh, shocked. He said, how do you know you're ready to get married? Are you in love? I sure am, the boy said. Well, how do you know you're in love? The father asked. Well, last night, when I was kissing my girlfriend goodnight, her dog bit me, and I didn't even feel any pain until I got home. <laughs> well, is that what you call puppy love? <laughs> Listen, I've lived a long time, and there are a lot of things that make me stop and wonder. For instance, I wonder why a speaker who needs no introduction gets one anyway. I wonder why when a preacher says, in closing, he does not. I wonder why people will punish a child for lying and turn around and tell the same child, just say, I'm not home. There are a lot of things in this world that may make, make us wonder, but one of the strangest of all is why God would love us. Why would God love us? That's another sermon, but let me say this. It is what we do that makes us wonder how God can love us. So we should realize something. We should realize that while God always does love us, he does not always love the things we do. Sometimes your husband or your wife or your son or your daughter or your friend or whoever will not love what you do, but they will still love you. Let me give you a good example. Anyone know how to play this game? Can Asta, oh, okay, got a couple of hands up. Um, canasta is the Spanish word for basket. Uh, it probably comes from uh, the tray or the basket that you put discards in in the middle of the table. It was imported from South America in the late 1940s. And by 1952, an estimated 20 million people were regularly, regularly playing canasta, including my parents. 1952, I was 10 years old, and they taught me how to play. We played with two decks, and I always had trouble holding all those cards because of my small hands. By the time I left home and entered the armed forces at the age of 17, I wouldn't say I was a canasta whiz, but I would say I knew the game pretty well. And I vowed to never play again. <laughs> All right, this is the point at which you may leave, Brenda. <laughs> My wife, Brenda. <laughs> so Brenda and I were married, and um, we had a couple of friends who would come to the house and the two friends and Brenda kept pestering me to play canasta. They wanted to play canasta. I did not say, well, I know how, but I'm not going to play. I just said, I don't want to play canasta. I do not want to play. But they browbeat me, and in a moment of weakness, they decided that they were going to teach me how to play, and we sat down at the table with cards. Come on, they said, we'll teach you how to do this. And so we sat together, and as they pointed out the rudiments of the game, I remained silent. Now, we weren't playing partners. And by the end of the evening, I had won all the hands, and that was the point when the trouble came. <laughs> Brenda laid down her cards and quietly looking at me said, You know how to play. That was like the little rumble before a major earthquake. <laughs> I'm serious. That's right, the two friends said. You know how to play. 
and the accusation grew in intensity until there was fire in Brenda's eyes and smoke coming out of their ears and they stood up and they said with angry expressions, you know how to play and you beat us. <laughs> and they looked a lot like this. <laughs> it was most unpleasant, I can tell you. Uh, but please, this is not a random story. I told you this story because there are two points I want to make in connection with it. First, Brenda still loved me. <laughs> I, it got kind of chilly around the house for a while. <laughs> but she still loved me, even though she was angry, even though she was hurt, and even though she considered my deception the same as a lie, which it was, by the way, she still loved me. Second point is this. You know what? That's the way it is between you and God. When you belong to him, that does not mean he will put up with anything and everything. But even though you anger him, he still loves you. Even though you hurt him, he still loves you. And even when you try to hide things from him, he still loves you. Keep that foremost in your mind. He doesn't want us to do these things, but he still loves us. And his love is proven by Scripture. John 3.16 is a good example. This is from the New King James Version, which I like very much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave his only begotten Son for us that we may live with him forever. That is a real act of love. And may I say that our English language is somewhat lacking in precise word meanings. The Greek is much more precise and some other foreign languages are quite precise. But take the word can, C-A-N. Can you understand that I eat peas out of a can? And if you work for me and I send you back to the pantry to get a can of peas and you ask me if you can do it, I tell you that you can. And if you do not, that I will can you. And I may even kick you in the can. And if I do that, you will report me and I could be thrown into the can by the police. Can you get all of that? Confusing, isn't it? Well, it's the same with love. The word love can be confusing. How do I love? Jonathan, I, 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 I really love what you went through with your meditation, uh, particularly the ice cream part. <laughs> no, it was very, very good. The whole list that you gave. How do I love? like my favorite ice cream or like a brother do I love like a brother do I love like a married couple that's uh, romantic love right or do I love like a parent sometimes that's uh, tough love can be should be or with a self-sacrificing love that puts God and others before my own interests. I am supposed to put you first and me second, not because I am your pastor, but because I love you. And it doesn't make any difference whether I'm sitting in the pew or up here in the pulpit or anywhere else in life. Whatever I'm doing, I am supposed to put you before my own self-interests. That's the way it is supposed to work. And sometimes, sometimes we preachers, uh, we, just, we just want to shout out and scream at the world when they talk about how they love this, that, or the other, 
that that is not love in the truest sense. Sometimes we want to be like this guy. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Wrong picture. Uh, <laughs> do you love me? You can forgive me for that. There was a guy named Crocodile Dundee in a movie, several movies actually, two or three, in the 1980s, and in one of them he visits New York City from the Australian outback, finds himself cornered by a gang of young thugs who demand his money, and when Crocodile Dundee does not give his wallet, one of them pulls out a switchblade and threatens him and he reaches behind his back and pulls out this enormous knife saying, that's not a knife, this is a knife. You might remember that, that is a knife. It's like a sword. So when someone is telling me about how they love pizza or the beach or a television show or whatever, I want to grab a copy of 1 Corinthians 13 and say, no, no, that's not love. This is love. What's in here is love. But they don't get it. They just do not get it. And that's why I want you to turn right now in your Bibles so we can read it together. Would you do that, please? Book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. By the way, this is known as the great love chapter of the New Testament. The great love chapter. You will not find a better definition of agape love than chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. For you visitors you realize by now that I have two speeds in preaching, slow and slower. <laughs> so if we're all there together, I will read this as you follow along. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when love, perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So what the world needs now is love, sweet love, to match these 13 verses. And not just for some, but for everyone. If you examine these verses, you will come to the conclusion that lack of biblical love is a heart problem. 
It is a problem with our hearts, not the one that pumps blood, but the other one. A man was walking into a hospital, and he saw two people wearing white coats digging around the flower beds. He realized they were two doctors, and, and he said, are you all right? Excuse me, have you lost something? They said, no, we're getting ready to give an IRS guy a heart transplant, and we're trying to find a suitable stone. But could it be that our greatest problem in all of life is a selfish heart? Because 1 Corinthians 13 preaches against being selfish. And aren't we always being tempted to abandon love? A minister was speaking about all the things that money can't buy. Money can't buy happiness, he said and money you will never be able to buy love. And then he said something I never dreamed of. He said, neither can it keep you from loving someone. And I thought, how, how could money keep you from loving someone? To drive home his point, he said, what if I offered you $10,000 not to love your mother or your father? And there was a reaction in the congregation, much like yours, dead silence. Until a wee small voice was heard from one of the children. And the child said, how much would you give me not to love my sister? <laughs> <laughs> all right, now there's a point to that. When we're young, it's all about us. It's all about us when we're young. It's not about brother and sister or mother and father. When we're young, it's about us. Two kids were talking to one another, and one said, I'm really worried. I'm worried. My dad works 12 hours a day to give me a nice home and good food. My mom spends the whole time cleaning and cooking for me. I'm worried sick. And the other one said, what have you got to worry about? Sounds to me like you got it made. And the other one said, well, yeah, but what if they try to escape? What? Sometimes it's all about us. When we're small, it is. When we're teenagers, it is. And sometimes it doesn't change, you see. Jesus said we're to love our neighbors as ourselves. And the person said, It's no chore for me to love the whole world. My only real problem is my next door neighbor. That can happen. Next door is one thing. How about when that person you have trouble loving is right in your home? And that can happen. That's when the real struggle starts. We need to be careful in that case that we don't become the alpha male or alpha female or top dog in the family with an my way or the highway attitude because it makes everyone's life miserable when we do that. It would be like living in a cage with a lion. A man was visiting a small zoo. He saw the strangest thing. There was a monkey living in the lion's cage. So I said to the zookeeper, I think a monkey got over into the lion's cage. He said, no. No, that's, that's where the monkey lives. Well, he said, do they get along? Well, pretty much, as the keeper said, occasionally they have a disagreement and we have to get a new monkey. <laughs> yeah. See, everything was fine, everything was fine until the lion started acting like a lion. And when we act like top dog, in the church, in the family, in whatever, that's when the problem starts. So as long as someone in the family or the church or the neighborhood or the country, the county, the state, the nation decides they're going to be top dog, everyone else suffers. We need love, sweet love, sweet agape love, sweet biblical love. Because in this old world, there just isn't enough of it. 
Sounds like a contradiction in terms, but if someone wrongs you or hurts you, let them know how you feel, but don't hold on to it. You cannot afford to hold on to it. You have got to forgive them. Jesus said, if you do not forgive others of their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive you yours. That is a dangerous thing to do, to hold on to hard feelings. You need to be like that story of two friends walking across the desert. At some point in the journey, they had an argument. And one friend up and slapped the other right in the face. And the one who got slapped was hurt, but without saying anything, he wrote in the sand. He just bent down and wrote in the sand. Well, that's upside down. No, it's not. My eyes are upside down, aren't they? I'll read it for you. Today, my best friend slapped me in the face. And they kept walking till they found an oasis where they got a nice drink and decided to go waiting. The one who had been slapped in the face got stuck in some quicksand and started sinking. But his friend saved him, pulled him out, and after he recovered from nearly dying, he dug around in his pack, pulled out a chisel and a hammer, and started chiseling on a stone. And here's what he put. Today, my best friend saved my life. So the one that saved his life didn't understand, said, after I hurt, you wrote in the sand. But now that I saved your life, you engrave a stone. Why? And he said this. When someone hurts us, we should write it down in sand where the winds of forgiveness can erase it away. But when someone does something good for us, we must engrave it on stone where no wind can ever erase it. Now I want you to think about the days of your lives. Some of us have lived a long time and if we think back about wonderful moments, wonderful moments in our lives, I want you to realize something. It will be with people you like and you love. That's a gift. You might remember 10 or 12 special days in your life as you remember back, very special days top of the mountain days and it will always be with people you love I want you to understand this and it's hard it's a hard concept to grasp when you're with that person that you don't love when you're with that person who really ticks you off when you're with that person whom you do not want to be around, you also need to love them. And that means you must do for them as you would do for those very special people in your life. Because if you don't, you know better than the heathens. Scripture says that. The heathens, you know, they do for each other, for people that they like and care about. <laughs> we are to do for those that we don't care about God says we are to love meaning we are to care for and do for the unlovely and the unlovable may that be in our lives and now Lord God may the message dwell in our hearts Dwell in our hearts as we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We have an opportunity to uh, respond to the message today, and that message isn't George's message. That message is God's message. Because if you have ever loved or been loved in your lifetime, 
you have someone to thank for that and that someone is God because God is love he's the source of all love and he defines true love and so maybe take a look at your own personal life uh, today and see how am I going to respond to God's love uh, the scripture's clear um, to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to repent to turn away it means to turn away from your sin and to turn toward God uh, confess that uh, he is Lord of your life and, and then to follow through with the baptism uh, into Christ and immersion for the forgiveness of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and if those you have questions about that or perhaps you want to make that decision today we encourage you to, to do that uh, stepping forward uh, if you've already taken those steps and you're wanting to find a new church uh, here at uh, North Citrus Christian Church, we invite you to come forward as well and be a part of that. Uh, we're going to sing our response back to God by singing, My Jesus, I Love Thee. So if you have a decision to make, um, come as we sing. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign, my gracious Redeemer, my Savior. to the knowledge of Christ and thereby be saved. And Lord God, I further pray that you watch over us and keep us safe. Keep us safe from this dreadful COVID. Keep us safe from mishaps, accidents, illnesses. And let us come and meet again, sharing together in sweet fellowship. Thank you so in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Right, we're going to close today with that chorus of Oh How I Love Jesus. 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 Because He first loved me. Have a great week, everybody.